can you hear me? Is my voice clear? Yes, sir, I can hear your voice, sir. Okay, oh, looks like we're still waiting for Amira. So if you, uh, I'm already messaging him, I messaged him before, so if he cannot join us now, he can watch the recording later. Uh, yes, sir, I already called him. Okay, and, good. Uh, he's on the way. Okay, great. So uh, let's begin to talk about the FYP. Um, now, obviously, the very first thing to do about the final year project, uh, first of all, uh, welcome to being my student. I hope I do a good job in this presentation. I'm going to show you uh, some, uh, some, uh, some of my screen in a while to discuss a few things, and then we talk about the project. Now, uh, your project is unique in a sense that uh, there is a little bit of unknown factor here. Um, currently, in the current situation, of course, with Malaysia, we are doing virtual projects. Uh, last semester students, uh, FYP students who started last semester who are currently doing FYP2, uh, they are now uh, doing virtual projects. And then uh, in your case, uh, you still have a long journey to end your FYP. You're still starting now FYP1. And then the next semester, which will be by the end of the year, right, it will be FYP2. So it's very much possible that towards the end of F or maybe at the, by, by the time we reach the FYP2, which is in June, because there's not going to be no FYP in the short semester. If you look at the calendar, let me open up the calendar here for this semester. Um, I'm going to show you my screen in a minute, yeah? So I'm opening the calendar now. Um, okay, let me share my screen, yeah? Okay, so here's the calendar as you see for this academic year, and we are now here in this semester. So as you can see, uh, no, sorry, we are here. Sorry, we are in semester two, not in semester one. And as you can see, after the semester two, we will have short semester, and then we will have the break between the semester, and then semester two will start in September 2021. You go to the website of Unitan and download the next year calendar, uh, let me quickly do that. You will see that there's plenty of time for you uh, to do the project. Now, FYP1 is usually, whether it was in the lab or it was virtual, it's always been uh, a theoretical uh, uh, part. I mean, in, in semester one or FYP1, usually we do a literature review. We will do, uh, I'm on the website right now, yeah? What's calendar? Oh, yeah, calendar here. So calendar for 2021, semester two. Oh, it looks like the calendar for 2021. This is, a, oh yeah, here, 2021. And then uh, undergraduate and postgraduate. Sorry, yeah, this is the one. So this right here, uh, okay, so let me, uh, you know what, let me download this to my file. So stop, semester two. And that will be calendar 21, 22. And then let me open it. Ah, sorry. Yeah. No, this is uh, still, yeah, it's 2021. Yeah, so basically we are in this semester right now, which is semester two. Uh, in the short semester, there is no FYP. That's actually a good news for you because that means during this short semester, I'm not sure if you're doing industrial training or if you're doing something else, but uh, essentially, uh, have you done your industrial training or um, you still need to do it? I still need to do it, so I have not done yet. Is this going to be in this short semester or in the next year? This year, this year's semester. This year's semester. Okay, so again, while you're doing your industrial training, this will be also an opportunity for you that while you are, let's say, in the company, whatever, if you can allocate, let's say, a few hours a week to uh, work on your FYP, that would be it. I mean, 
it's not compulsory, but it's definitely something that is, that is recommended because that means you will have more time to work on it. Even better still, if you could find a way to incorporate your FYP into your work in the industrial uh, training, that means trying to link between the, your work in that company and your FYP, that would be ideal. But the problem here is that you're going to be starting your FYP here. So you have no idea, unless you already have a plan for your industrial training and you know where you're going, then you can think of a topic that can relate to that company. Or at the very least, you have an idea of which type of company you're going to go to, and then hopefully the, the topic which you want to uh, work on can be related to them. Uh, sir, can I start with a topic here, and then during the industrial training, I change my topic? Uh, yes or no? Yes, in a sense where we cannot stop you, but then you, you may have to repeat some of the work that you have done here. I mean, you may have to sort of restart kind of some of the stuff you've done here. I said maybe, not uh, will have to, because if the new title of your FIP is still related to the work you've done here, then uh, you can just continue. So if there is a way we can try to align your project title into your work with your industrial training work so that we can link together. You see, uh, if you link your FIP to industry, that will give your FIP a lot more value and a lot more uh, benefit both to you and to the company. They might see you as more um, serious student, more capable, and therefore uh, increases your chances of employment or even improve, improves your resume in the future because that will also result in sort of industrial experience. You can extend your industrial experience, not just during the few weeks of industrial training, but also during the FYP itself. The FYP can be considered part of your industrial experience. But anyway, uh, just to give you an idea, that this is your calendar. See, starting from this semester, then you have those weeks that are between 173, so that's 10 weeks here, plus three, that's 13 weeks here, and then you have semester two, uh, FYP two, which is in here. Now, that will be an almost, next, almost by the end of next year. Now, the thing is, um, um, we, of course, with the, with the, with the arrival of vaccine, vaccines in Malaysia, there is a hope that uh, the MCO and the lockdown will end soon. And therefore, uh, we will be, you will be able to get back to the lab or at least come back to the, or to the, to the university campus and therefore uh, do the work physically, not just virtually. So that is why um, your group, uh, Although has, uh, I think there's a very high chance that even midway through this semester that we'll be back to the campus. It depends on the numbers. If you notice, the daily numbers are beginning to go down. We were 4,000 a few like a few weeks ago, but now we are in the 2,000 range. At this rate, we were looking. We will be inshallah looking at smaller and smaller numbers in the months to come, and uh, that means that. Uh, maybe in this semester you'll be back to the campus, but very likely that in, in FYP2, we will all be already back at the campus. You get me? So you will, we will not be doing virtual projects for this group. For your group. We will be working on uh, um, actual projects. What does that mean? Meaning that in FYP1, you will be doing the theoretical work, literature review, planning, uh, learning, etc. And then by the time we reach the semester FYP2, which will be in August, uh, sorry, will be in September uh, 2021, meaning up to nine months from now or eight months from now, there's a very high chance that essentially that we will be back at the campus by then, and then we will be able to do the work hands-on, by the develop the model, uh, build it, something, and so on and so forth. Is that clear? Any questions so far about the plan or the about the virtual versus actual project? Uh, so, so, one by one, let's begin with um, Amiroy. Um, so what happened if, for example, didn't doesn't get better, the MCO still continue until the end of the year? Well, uh, let's not think hypothetical, but you're right. What happens if it doesn't get better? Well, uh, this was the situation last semester. Last semester, if you remember, we temporarily, we went back to the campus. If you remember, back in October or November, right? 
there yeah. was optimism that we were supposed to go back to the campus. So FYP last semester, FYP one, just like you, we started with actual project, but then by the end of November, we were all back to virtual again. So they had to convert to virtual uh, for their uh, project. So again, this batch of students is currently doing FYP two, they will have to complete if virtual because the plan already started with virtual. Now, uh, coming back to your question, if, and this is very unlikely, but if, let's say we are in September 2021, and God forbid, yeah, the situation did not improve, and we are still in virtual mood or MCO, then we would have to convert to virtual project. But uh, I look at it as in a way that, uh, inshallah, this is unlikely to happen. Inshallah, we will be doing actually. But in the event that uh, this did not happen and the situation did not improve, then we will see the situation, how it goes. We will probably take a look at the situation or re-examine the situation during the special semester. During the special semester, or let's say five weeks before the start of the second semester or before the FYP2, we will re-examine the situation. If the situation has improved, uh, let's say one month before the FYP, uh, uh, before the FYP2, uh, if the situation has improved and we are back to uh, actual, then we continue as planned. If the situation did not improve and we had to continue virtual, then we we discuss what's going to, what's, what's going to happen. Then. We may have to convert and change plans and so on. Okay, Amiro or All Fahmi, right. whoever asked that question. Okay, okay, sir. Thank you. Uh, Fahmi, you wanted to ask a question or is it the same question? Uh, no, sir. Um, for the short semester, uh, mm -hmm. So since there are no FYP two, can I continue my project FYP two or short semester? Means you can, uh, but you cannot officially register for it. Oh, uh, uh -uh. FYP. I mean, of course, if you don't have a, let's say you don't have an industrial training, let's say right, or you don't have any plan for industrial training, or you've done it already, whatever, right? You can very well continue to work on the project, but officially you cannot take FYP two during the short semester. Ah, uh, yeah. I understand that. That means uh, when I uh, entering the second semester, I just uh -huh. submit the work that I done on the short semester. Right? Uh, you mean you want to complete the project altogether? Not complete. Right? I think uh, just doing the half of the FYP2. By all semester. means, by all means, this is actually the recommended action. Uh, oh, I, yeah. I, in fact, I want you all to use this opportunity. Um, I'll give you another situation. The students who are your seniors, last semester they did FYP1 here, and now they're doing FYP1 here, FYP2 here. So there was no break between semesters. They only had the three weeks here. You got know what I mean? So FYP1 and FYP2 for them, yeah, they were just one quick succession. You, on the other hand, you have FYP1 here, and then you have a whole semester in between. So by all means, you will have about 10 weeks, 13 weeks, in between FYP1 and FYP2. You can definitely use this time to work on your project. Yeah. Develop your model, uh, learn more, um, do whatever you want. Of course, in, co in collaboration or in, um, in coordination with me, I will be more than happy to work with you during the semester, during the short semester. I mean, I will continue to, my, to do my job during the short semester as usual. Supervisor, uh, I would have weekly meetings, uh, maybe the session or the time slot will be different, but uh, I will continue to work with you. If you need anything to approve, let's say a purchase form, whatever, right, I will definitely and happily sign it. Meaning, from my point of view, during the short semester, I will continue to work as usual as supervisor. Uh, even if, let's say, you completed the whole FYP altogether here and you have nothing to do the, during the next semester, that's fine. Uh, of course, you cannot just simply uh, Register FRP2 and then submit and close. That you have to follow the schedule. You still have PR3 to submit, and you still have uh, oral presentation at the end of the semester too, and of course the thesis and all this stuff. But your job will be much much easier uh, during the semester because you've already completed the hard work, and then you can then um, uh, focus on your other subjects. You see, if you, when you take FYP2, uh, and, and even now when you're taking FYP1, you are also taking other subjects. Is that right? So yes, sir. if so if you manage your time correctly and during the short semester, let's say complete the bulk of the FYP work, then during the following semester, during FYP2, then you don't have to do a lot of work during the semester itself. You just have to work on the writing and the reporting. So 
Then the rest of the time, you can focus on your other subjects. So once again, this is your time management. This is the, if you ever heard about it before, time management, multitasking, and all that stuff, this is it. This is what it comes to. So if you manage your time correctly, starting from now and during the short semester, then uh, by all means do it. I will be more than happy to assist and help as well. Does that answer your question, Tommy? Yes, sir. Thank you. Okay. Um, so with that, any other question from anyone? So to make, uh, so with that in mind, when you, select, when you think of a topic for your FRP, you have to have some sort of a plan B ready. That you take your current version or the plan B meaning that, although it's unlikely, but the plan B meaning that you may have to switch to virtual at some point. Uh, but I believe that it's not going to happen, inshallah. I'm being optimistic about it. Even without, um, even without uh, vaccines, we are seeing the numbers slowing down already. So hopefully uh, that will continue. Now, uh, if you look at our uh, Teams page, and uh, let me show you the Teams page. Yeah. That if you look at our Teams page in, uh, in here, you will see that there are um, a number of presentations from last semester. Um, and this is a useful one about current charts and how to use it. I would, I want everyone, uh, because today, after this today's discussion, you will need to send me your grand chart <coughs> or tentative grand chart. So I want you to go and watch this video. Just click on it, and then you will be able to watch this video. Uh, it's available on stream. And how to work? I know you may have heard about the grand chart. Uh, Whatever you heard about the grand chart before may or may not be the, what I'm looking for. So I need you to watch this video so that we will all be on the same page. Then uh, this one may be early for you, but uh, this may come to us, uh, may come to a fact um, at some point, maybe not. But if it comes to it, then you may need to watch this video on how to switch to virtual environment. Uh, but for now, you can ignore this one. If you, if you want, you can watch it just to just to give yourself ideas or what or at least at least to know what would happen if you're going to go virtual. So maybe that will help you in planning. So I guess maybe uh, yeah, I think this is right. So this is gun chart, how to work on gun chart, how to develop a proper gun chart the way that I'm expecting it. And this is what is a, how to work with virtual project in case it comes down to it. This one is not yet required for you to watch because this will be at the end of this semester. This is at the end of semester one or FRP one. You may have to present an oral presentation. Uh, that will be come to it later. This file or this document here includes not only the video, but also this document here, the text document include notes. But that will come later, not now. We are doing right now uh, the welcome to FRP. So uh, at, at the end of the discussion today, you may want to come and watch these couple of videos, which is Grand Chart as well as Virtual, so that you will be familiar with uh, the discussion that we're going to have today. OK? So obviously, the next question you will have is topic. What is my F1 topic? Uh, in order to, to answer this question, let's take a look at the uh, Ten website again. Let me open up in here. Uh, titles, menu, and project titles. FIP1, we are here. Let's click on my name. Uh, you will not be able to see this list, but uh, this, is, this is a survival. I hope you can see your names now. So this is essentially our my three titles, or my three students. Muhammad Amir Al-Kudaus, Muhammad Sami and Amir al are right here. Uh, currently speaking, you have, uh, I'm not sure uh, you were assigned to me, and, and my area of expertise is on robotics, mechatronics, control, and automation. That means uh, there's definitely a level of uh, electromechanical system involved, meaning some programming, some control, some mechatronics involved, uh, IoT, uh, and so on and so forth. Now, if you uh, if you if you're thinking, oh my God, I don't know anything about these two, this is about programming or whatever. If you don't know anything about programming, then come to my courses on Moodle. Uh, I'll show you. Let me just change my name first to student. Uh, I suggest strongly that you come to my courses. 
uh, in my courses, you can see here, um, you can ignore the theoretical stuff in the background, and you can come and focus here on uh, interacting with microprocessors and controllers. As you can see, uh, I provide a comprehensive uh, foundation training on this topic. Uh, I can I provide what is embedded system, like a theoretical background notes, and also I provide uh, uh, video lectures. These video lectures are actually on YouTube, on my own channel. Um, you know what, let's not go from here. Let's not go from here, let's go from here. So if you go to my uh, YouTube channel, you will see that I have uh, distinctive links. Uh, so I have my, both of my courses, by the way, electronics and microprocessors, as well as robotics and automation. Uh, they are available online, uh, videos that is. The, the EMN, the ENM course, which is this, this is a complete course, every session basically, uh, is available here. It's a, it's a hands-on video tutorial that walks you through the process. And the same thing for robotics. The robotics is ongoing because I'm doing it now. And so every week I'm going to be adding a video of here. But returning to Moodle, so this is now ENM, my course. And that will give you all the training you'll ever need. Uh, PowerPoint slides, video lectures, as well as uh, document words as well. Um, I think there was one video missing from here, which is the embedded system. But anyway, and also you have uh, the video lectures. First, you have the refresher on C++, the refresher on Python. These are hands-on tutorials. And uh, then you have Arduino, Arduino, and, uh, and what is the Internet of Things? There is more uh, videos on Raspberry Pi as well, but the Raspberry Pi is not for virtual, so I am remo removing it from now. In my other course, Robotics and Automation, you will find, uh, by the way, my courses are available to anyone. You don't have to uh, um, enroll. But if you need to enroll, just, uh, do, sorry, uh, do not enroll. Uh, it's available without enrolling. Enrolling is only for my students, my life, so that they will be able to complete the time. So once again, Robotics, you can come and learn about um, the background of robotics and theories and all this stuff. And then you also, uh, you do not have to come here, by the way. This part right here is advanced a little bit and is meant for those who are doing the course. But if you come down here, you will see exactly the same videos that are shown in the previous course. Again, refresh on C++, Arduino, Arduino, and IoT. So essentially, I think it's best for you not to come to the robotics course, but come to my ENM, which is electronics and microprocessors. I know, I know that you have already taken electronics and microprocessors or micro P, but that is different from this version of the course. Um, let me double check here. Did anyone take this course with me in the last year or so? No? No, 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 no sir. sir. Okay, you have taken then the earlier version of the course. You are now, the, this new version of the course has, was introduced only in October 2019. That's, it's very, very new. And uh, I only run this course, uh, and now the, I, I remember the old course. It was basically uh, how, to, how to design and circuit, something like that. But the new version of the course is specifically designed to help you to learn how to work with Arduino, Raspberry Pi, how to control an actuator system or an electromechanical system, and so on and so forth. If you feel left out, uh, this is just a new course, it just happened, and it's meant only for the new batch. Unfortunately, we cannot. if you want to re register or, re or uh, resit for this course again, sure, but it's available for you here. You can just come in and go through the videos one by one. You know what I mean? And you can do that during semester one. If you want to take this course again as a credit, I'm not sure if you can attend as a guest, but I think you may have to pay for it. Otherwise, you can just attend it for free by watching through my videos and going through the material here, and so on and so forth. Uh, do not attempt those assignments, uh, because that will mess up my grading system. If you want to attend on your own, but without submitting, it's fine. The same goes for the lab sheets, and so on and so forth. Okay? So I believe that all the material that you need, or do you will ever need to work with, electronics and, embedded and uh, robotics and, and whatever, right? That will help you, or these videos are, or will be available to you to watch, uh, to go through. That actually is uh, the area, or my area of, uh, of expertise, which is 
robotics, automation, um, IoT, and so on and so forth. So your job in semester one is to use the resources available to you. If you don't like to come to Moodle, they are all available on YouTube, like I said, right? You just come to here or go to my list on, uh, on electronics and microprocessors, which is the same course. Um, and actually, I'm going to copy the link or, yeah, copy the link. Or you, you want, let me just share it here. So copy the link, and I'm going to paste it in our chat uh, right now, if you would like to register to it. Okay, and uh, essentially, uh, I already uh, put the link in, in our chat. Uh, the videos are not available on stream, on our unit and stream, because unit and streams keep the videos only for a limited time. And then they would, they, all the videos are removed to give space for the next semester and so on and so forth. But that's why I put my videos on YouTube so that they will stay there forever. So essentially, uh, these are the videos. You can start from the fundamentals and work your way until uh, the end, essentially. And some of the videos are hands-on, like basically they really walk you through the process. So, and also it's virtual, meaning you can work with it at home online. And so go through it and it will help you to learn the basics of control. Okay, uh, project title venue, project titles, and my name, and here we are. So now, the very first task we need to do is to complete this information right here for each student. For each one of you, you will have to uh, define, or we will have to work together, you and me, to define. If you notice, last week when I asked you to prepare for this meeting, I asked you to prepare a title, a uh, methodology. Uh, or synopsis. Synopsis basically is a short description, methodology, and, and deliverables. What you plan to do at the end. This one you can ignore for now, sponsor, and ignore the rest for me to add. Okay, how do we determine a project title for you? There are two ways. Either you can come up with an idea yourself, uh, show it to me, or present it to me, or tell me briefly what it is. And if I find that your idea is in line with my work, and in line with my areas of expertise, then I will approve it. And then if I approve it, then we just take this information and we put it here and it becomes official, it becomes your title. If let's say, if you don't have an idea in mind, then I will essentially assign a topic to you. I will, uh, I have a number of ongoing projects and I will take some of them or one of them or something related to them, definitely to a lower scale and that will become your title. Uh, of course, um, I don't mind giving titles, but I would prefer um, that you find your own idea because if it's your idea, then it will be something that you are, I mean, something that you would want to do, something that is uh, easier for you to work with, hopefully, and something that you interested to work with. I find that to be a much easier to uh, uh, for you to complete your FRP. If the title was given for me, you might feel a little bit pressured or you might feel a little bit under stress or not familiar, et cetera, et cetera. But if you all can come up with something in between, like you come up with a title, I tweak it a little bit, and then we can agree on your part. Right. So without further delays, uh, let's begin with Amiro Farhan. Uh, do you have any idea in mind, Amiro, or um, for your FYP? Amiro Farhan. I was thinking about anything that have any correlation with Arduino, because I I uh, went to sense data and see some uh, some in, something uh, some Arduino related things that interest me. So for example, I I I watch I uh, read about they using they use Arduino for to to draw using a CNC machine something familiar to that. Oh, that's nice. If you love uh, Arduino, then you're gonna love this place. Take a cut. Uh, Thinkingcloud.com, uh, of course, if you want to work with, with the actual Arduino at home, I'm fine with that. But if you want to work with uh, a virtual Arduino, then you can come to Thinkercard.com. Tinker, you know, Tinker, catch out, right? And card for CAD. And Thinkercard.com allows you to, uh, to work with a virtual Arduino. I already have an account, so I'm just going to log in directly. We can make an account for free. And then once you are here, then you can actually come and work with your... Uh, with your uh, with your system directly. Hey, I mean, uh, let me just uh, show you what happens once you log in. Now, in Ticket Card, actually allows you to work with uh, 3D drawings, like AutoCAD drawing. 
it allows you to work with circuits, and more specifically, allows you to work with uh, Arduino. It's specifically meant for Arduino circuits. I'm going to start with you uh, from blank, just to show you this workshop. By the way, the videos that I shown here, when we arrive at this point, yeah, when we arrive at this point, Arduino introduction, and this one, we will see uh, virtual Arduino. Uh, we will see this one as well. Oh yeah, so this is the space where you will be working with virtual Arduino. You can, you can basically grab an Arduino board from here, and you can take a breadboard as usual, and then all the components, sensors, uh, resistors, however you like, really. And you can even program it from here. You can either use blocks or uh, text, if you prefer text like me, or you can combine them both, uh, so however you like, really. And you can even simulate the project directly here by clicking on Start Simulation. If I click Simulation now, nothing will happen because my circuit does not show up, does not have anything. But we can also uh, pick up existing uh, designs, right? So if you pick up any existing designs, then uh, you can actually simulate them and work with them virtually. Now, if you want to work in a virtual environment, sure, if you want to work, you can even after you finish, click on share and can share your project and so on and so forth. Uh, this is how the virtual project people, the current group, are working on. They're working on this environment. And I think in my video on the Teams page, in our Teams page, I walk with students who have to come here and register and how to work with big stuff. But uh, if you would like to work with an actual Arduino by buying a physical Arduino set, a training kit, and then working with it at your home, I would recommend you do that. Because in this, uh, Clickercard is useful, definitely useful. It helps you to learn Arduino and program and so on and so forth. Especially if you go to those uh, ready-made uh, projects. If you go to this, uh, if you log in and you click on circuits, you will see models that are ready-made, either developed by the systems themselves or available uh, by others. And you can actually click on take a kit, click at this, and then uh, this is developed by me. It uh, looks like in the previous project. Uh, in previous time, I may have developed this. And then you can actually uh, click on simulation. Uh, and I don't remember what this project was about. Oh, it has nothing, no code yet. I think I was trying to create a traffic light, like this will simply uh, will uh, rotate together. Uh, let's try something more interesting. Let's see if there's any more. Oh, you know what? I forgot. Actually, it's uh, it's here. So let's take a go at, if we go back to the to work area, and if we look at, uh, not uh, basic, but look at Adreno right here. All right? And you will see ready-made project. But first of all, let's delete all of this. Um, yeah, let's trash the whole thing. Uh, yeah, let's try something. Okay, so now we can actually see ready-made Arduino projects, right? And you can click on any of those or just drag it in here and then you can actually, it, it, by the way, it's not just a physical uh, Arduino system. It's also, let's just start with a blink, which is a simple one. So this blink exercise, uh, it's not just this, but it also comes with its own program. Uh, I prefer text, so if you go to here and you'll see that this is already programmed here. So you click on start simulation, and you will see that the light is actually blinking. You, know I mean? you can come here and, and tinker with this and change the frequency if you want. You cannot change the code while simulating, so you can come here to the code itself and change the frequency. If you make the frequency smaller, it will uh, blink faster. So, okay, now we start again. It, notice now the blinking is now a little bit faster. If you stop again and make it even smaller, let's say 300, right, 300 milliseconds, and then this should be faster still. You see, so this is what I mean by that you can actually come here, build a project sim in using, simula uh, using this simulated environment, program it, simulate it, and run it, and share it in the end, and then take this idea or this program, and then uh, basically download it as a file or as an image, and then send it to others. Either, either share it as an image or share it as a, as a as a, as a design for the project. That actually can then can be opened by others and then you can actually see the project as well. So this is a virtual environment for Arduinos. It's a great tool, a great place to learn Arduinos. 
But if you want to learn on your own, uh, Arduino, let's uh, at home, that's actually uh, much, much better. So uh, to answer your question, uh, Nero, right? Um, you want to work with Arduino? Okay, sounds good for me. But then uh, we need to have a specific application. Uh, working with Arduino, just working for Arduino, uh, it's not enough. We need to have a purpose. So do you have a purpose in mind? Or something that you want to achieve with your Arduino set? I, I assume something that, um, that involves with lights or something like, or motor, something. I was thinking of um, coding the Arduino to draw or to draw oh, in for shape. This is what I meant by an achievement. Uh, basically, this is what I meant by uh, a purpose. If you want to work with Arduino just for LED and just for lights to blink and just for things to move around uh, without any reason, that's basically training. You are just learning Arduino. Oh, okay. But if you want to develop an Arduino set to do a CNC or to do a drawing, then that is a purpose. Oh. Okay, so that's good. Now, unfortunately, uh, not unfortunately, um, I don't know how do I say this? You cannot do this purpose in this virtual world here. Uh, although uh, in Arduino or in this environment, you do have motors, but those motors, uh, they do not allow you to move physical items. Okay, uh, it does not allow you to, okay, let's look at, we have motors, we have sensors, definitely. We have, oh yeah, yeah, we have motors, for example. We have a DC motor that will be rotating for 360, rotate forever. We have a DC motor with encoder, meaning you can control uh, an angle. And we even have a micro server. You can actually rotate it in a specific angle. But then none of these motors will allow you to do anything meaningful here in this virtual environment. But if you want to develop an Arduino system, an electromechanical system that involves a drawing, that means an X, y, at least an XY manipulation. That means you need to develop it and build it in the real world. You know what I mean? You, you definitely need two motors, one for X and one for Y direction. And then you need to write a program algorithm that translates uh, you know, the letter or the, the drawing that you want into X, Y motion. Then you will need to uh, do all of that uh, in a physical project, not in a virtual project. So does that work for you? Does that sound like a plan? Yeah, it sounds like a plan. And I know, I know uh, it sounds a little bit scary right now and a little bit uh, overwhelming when you think about it, but don't worry, you will have plenty of time to learn uh, the basics of programming, then the basics of Arduino, and then work with Arduino, and then, then you work on your project. So I think we agree on that. So I'm going to write it here somewhere. That the title for a mural are hung tentatively, yeah, is on developing uh, Arduino, Arduino based. Uh, do you want to include uh, three dimensional? Or, I mean, sorry, you're going to be writing um, a system to draw on a paper, is that right? Can you repeat that, sir? Uh, your, your, your Arduino based drawing. Uh, System, right? We'll be drawing yeah. on a on a paper. Is that right? Yes, drawing on a paper. Okay. So uh, system. So that's basically tentatively your title, and you can improve the title a little bit, or so on and so forth, and then uh, work with. Okay. So uh, so far so good. We agree on this title, Miro. Uh, what do I call you, Miro or Farhan? Yeah. Yes, yeah, yes, yeah, sir. So what do I call you, Miro or Farhan? Farhan, most of the time. Because there's another view in the group, so yeah. Okay, so now we want to Farhan. Uh, okay, sir. So I already made the FYP one proposal as you request. Okay. And then uh, I'm not sure because. Uh, What's your idea? Let's not worry about the proposal for now. Oh, the idea. The idea is. Uh, oh, who's the idea? Yeah. I, uh, it's just an idea, sir. Uh, a laundry folding robot, sir. Laundry what? Folding robot. Robot. Uh, if you say you 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 search on the Google, there's a company that. No, I'm, I'm familiar with the folding robot. Yeah, yeah, folding. But mates, there sir. are several ways of doing the folding robot. You have a plan in mind. Oh, uh, but I think it's kind of complicated, sir. Do you think it so? It is 
Uh, it depends, Ray. Really. It depends on how you want to implement it. How do you want to implement it? There are simple examples of it, or simple versions of it, and uh, there are complicated versions of it. Okay. Uh, there are versions that involve uh, the robot plus the you know the, the environment stuff like the the place where you put the baju right or the clothing right itself yeah. has some uh, grooves or or places where it helps you with the folding. You know what I mean? Uh, 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 you might when you think about folding clothing, you might think of the robot as like us, like human robot, like humanoid with hands. It's going to grab the baju and he's going to fold it the way we do it. Is that right? Yeah. Well, that's not necessarily how we can achieve this. You don't necessarily have to have a folding robot that involves humanoid arms. Because that one will be very, very complicated to do. Quite advanced. Because that will involve two hands, two um, robot manipulators. You will need to study advanced robotics uh, plus programming. So that will be quite difficult to do. Uh, for an FRT, uh, someone who has not had any kind of, uh, I'm assuming yeah, that you have not had any kind of a, a, a training on robotics before. Is that right? Yes, sir. So to do this, now the other way of doing this uh, folding, I'm, I'm assuming that your, your, uh, your purpose here is not about the robot, but it's about the folding mechanism, the folding itself. Is that right? Yes, sir. So the other approach of doing this is that you don't have to build a humanoid robot with arms and hands. Instead, you can do something like this. Like it's a machine where you feed it the clothing, like let's say you put it from the top or the bottom line, and as, as it passes through uh, you know, uh, some rollers or whatever, it comes out on the other end being folded and ignore the price here. You know what I mean? Um, uh, or it could be something like this. You know what I mean? What I'm trying to tell you is that it doesn't necessarily have to be a humanoid robot with arms and hands that we will be able to, uh, to, uh, to, to do folding the way we do it. Instead, it could be some sort of a mechanism or an automated system that allows you to, you know, put in the baju in one side, uh, it comes out already folded. You know what I mean? Uh, that could be something that you can work because that could be an automated system, with, although it may involve some programming, but it's a lot less complicated versus a robot. We can call it folding machine. Yeah? So these are examples of folding machines. These, this could be as expensive as 12,000 or even it could be as cheap as 700. You know what I mean? So you can see how the simplicity, and even 30 ringgit. You know what I mean? You see, this is an example of a machine. Okay. So right here, this machine, which is only 13 bucks, right? I'm sure you may have seen it, right? You put the virtual here, and then as you turn these uh, things in sequence, in the, in the right sequence, the baju will be folded. You got know I me? Mean? Oh, yes, sir. You can actually begin from here, from this simple de design. All you have to do, rather than adding, allowing the human to, to fold by hand, you can put a series of motors in strategic locations, and then you can sequence them using the programming. You know what I mean? Uh, step oh. number one, uh, motor number one. Step number two, motor number two. You know what I mean? And that yeah. will become, that will be translated into a machine. And the, the other problem you have to worry about, or the only thing left for the human to do is feeding, just to put the budget there and then take out the folding part. Means, means we are using this kind of mechanism and then we embed it with uh, Arduino and also programming, sir. Yeah, I mean, this is an example of how you do it. What I'm trying to say is that there are many ways, as you can see from here, to achieve the same task, which is folding. Not necessarily uh, using a robotic arm and, and humanoid robotic arm. Uh, that will become very, very complex. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. See, this is something very important that when you are given a task to perform a job, um, your primary focus should be the job, not how. The how part is up to you. As long as your your end product completes the task, then we're good to go. You know what I mean? Yes, sir. So we can, uh, let's call you a, your system, not a robot, but folding uh, automated system. Okay? If you want to make it a robot, it's a fine. I'm just trying to help you here that a robot is also an automated system, okay? If you want to build a robot after all, it's fine with me. Um, a robot is still an automated system, but if you want to design or try different mechanism, it's also fine with me as well. So we can say um, clothing, not uh, laundry. Laundry is, gives you the impression that it's not clean. So clothing, folding, 
automated system or automated system for closing for you. Is that right? Is that uh, another good one? Sami? Uh, yes, sir. Does that sound good? Does that sound uh, like a good title? Yeah, I mean, so uh, title wise, okay. maybe you can improve the wording, but uh, what I mean is the, the, the idea is that you will be working on an automated system for clothing, for folding clothing. Uh, yes. Okay? All right, sir. So that is, that's for Han again, that will be funny. So that will be funny. Uh, okay, uh, now we move on to the last uh, title or the last person, which is Radul Amirul. Uh, Amirul, uh, yes, should I call you Amirul or Sultan? Ah, yeah. Or? yeah, Amirul. Okay, Amirul. So, okay, Amirul, any ideas? Or uh, do you have any idea in mind? For well, now, I just uh, working for, for the Arduino microcontroller, sir. Okay, that's lovely. But then, what are you going to do with it? Mm, they call it smart home using Arduino controller. What you gonna, microcontroller? Uh, what is the smart home part? I mean, smart home could be many things. Uh, ah, yeah. Uh, for, for now, so many ideas because uh, maybe for the temperature sensor. For the light sensor, for the gas sensor, in the yeah, not, um, not the specific one. Well, man, it can, but then that will involve IoT. Smart homes definitely involve IoT. I have oh, yeah. no problem with that because Arduino can work with IoT, but I, I think it's better if you uh, switch to other things. But uh, Arduino is fine. Mm -hmm. You can work with uh, Node MCO. Mm -hmm. And then you can link with some sensors, but then um, and the thing is about this title is that it has been done uh, many many times oh. uh, over the years, over the recent years. That's why I'm asking you for what, for what. Well, I want something special. I want something purposeful. <laughs> if you have a specific device in mind, mm -hmm. if you have a specific, uh, if you have a specific. Uh, Something in mind that you want to achieve. Let's say after you measure the sensors, uh, the temperature, after you measure the, the, you know, whatever sensor you have in mind, what are you going to do with this information? You know what I mean, mm. uh, smart robots. Okay, how is it smart? What will the temperature? Okay, let's say you build your system. You have a sensor, and you measure the temperature, and then your IoT system delivered that information to me on my mobile phone. Yeah. Now right. I know the temperature in my house, mm -hmm. even though I'm not in my house. How is that information going to be useful for me? What would I do with this information apart from watching it or learning about the amount of temperature in my house? Is there any benefit to it? Mm -hmm. You get what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you need to think about that. Uh, are we trying to reduce energy in the house? Are we doing uh, safety? Are we trying to link this information with another te other technologies? That's why we have a smart robot at home. Uh, we try to do something advanced. Let's say you want to do, uh, you want to make money, for example. Mm -hmm. uh, if this information could be useful to make money or to, to, to generate income. So you need to have a purpose. Mm -hmm. See, uh, all of the above here, mm -hmm. the above two titles, are also Arduino-based controllers. You get know what I mean? But they have a purpose. Uh, mm -hmm. See, this one is for a drawing, mm -hmm. to draw something. This one is a folding machine. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the, mm -hmm. see the emphasis on these two titles, it's not about the Arduino part. The Arduino is just a tool. Okay, sir. So you right now, you have the tool only, right? Mm -hmm. But no purpose yet. Mm -hmm. So any ideas? Or you need time to think about it? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so I'll give you all time to think about it. So for now, it's going to be uh, Arduino. For now, I'm going to put your title in the middle as Arduino-based system, but we don't know yet for what. Okay, okay? sir. Okay. And it's not necessarily for a house or a home. Okay. It could be for anything, as long as uh, Arduino-based uh, system for da 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 da. da. Okay, so uh, that would be uh, a task. Your first task is to come up with a purpose. Okay, sir. I will update you as step, sir. Okay, I will give okay. you actually. This is the next task. Uh, the next, uh, the next thing I want to talk about. So now that we all have an idea, tentatively, what's the idea is going to be all about? All right, you sir. need to work on. Um, you see, um. Uh, during your journey for FYP1 and FYP2, you have to work on two things in parallel. Uh, uh, you need to work on the project itself. So FYP journey, what does it involve? 
is this filling you. So number one, the project itself. You need to complete the project. In this case, model, controller, uh, programming, uh, etc. Okay, whatever you have in mind. And the second thing is also involves the report. See, at the end of FYP2, you will have to submit your thesis. Complete project thesis. And along the way, during the semesters, right, semester one and two, you will be building, you will be working on these two things at the same time. So you will be dividing your work as we go along. Uh, and the project actually, uh, apart from the report, uh, you are not gonna, the way, uh, let's just talk about the report for a minute, yeah? You are not gonna be uh, working on your FIP uh, for two semesters, and at the end of the semester two, you'll be required to start writing the report or the thesis. No, that's not going to happen. What is going to happen is that along the way, you will be required to submit a number of reports and progress presentations. And then along, uh, along the way, you will accumulate the report. So the very first thing you will write is the brief. Uh, the brief, as the name implies, is a very brief description of your project. And that is the thing that I showed you here. You go to some kind of menu. Uh, I'm sorry, you're not going to go online. You have to submit to me the, 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 the stuff to me in the Word document, and then I'm going to key in the stuff myself. But the brief contains this information that you see in front of you. Title, synopsis, methodology, deliverables, and any possible sponsor. Uh, this one is optional. If you, let's say if you have a company that, you, that works with you, that is willing to uh, sponsor you, let's say, Provide you with material or stuff like that, see as a friend or a relative or something like that. And they can then hook it up. If not, then it's fine. So, the very first thing you have to submit is the brief. And by the way, this one we need it this week. This week, ASAP. We need to finish this as soon as possible. The brief involves a title. Amiro, you need to finalize your idea and therefore your title as soon as possible, yeah? Okay. okay. Title, uh, synopsis, uh, method, and then deliverables. Deliverables. Okay, these last three items, synopsis, method, deliverables, it's not much, it's just one paragraph each, three or five lines maximum. Just very briefly what the idea is going to be about. Uh, I know, I know, understand. So what if the method changes later on? It's fine. Um, for now, it's your best knowledge, your best guess. That's right. Uh, what is the synopsis? The synopsis simply means um, what is. What is your project about? Just in a very small paragraph, explain what your project is going to be about. This one asks how you're going to do it. And this one is the output. Are you going to develop a model? I'm assuming that all of you guys are going to develop models. You're going to develop a system, an actual system, physical system, that is going to be delivered, the, deliver, the delivering or doing the following. Uh, this one's going to be a drone system. This is a folding code system, and this is XYZ system, but eventually you're going to have to develop a model. So you are going to develop a model that is going to perform the task. Okay? So that was the brief. What, what's next? Well, in semester one, in NFIP one, you need to submit PR1, or progress report number one. That one we will talk about later. What is included in progress report one? And also in semester one or FIP one, you will also need to submit progress report two, PR, or you know, you get the idea, progress report number two. Uh, are you aware of the calendar of FYP? Have you attended the briefing with FYP coordinator? Yeah, uh, yes, sir. Yes, so uh, supposedly in that meeting, you will get the calendar. Calendar means important dates. Important dates means when is PR1 is due, when is PR2 is due, and so on and so forth. So you need to know these important dates uh, because then you can plan your grant job. Yeah, I'll come to the grant job. So the brief, uh, I need this as soon as possible. Uh, and PR1 and PR2 are not now, uh, so you can ignore them for now. Uh, uh, there is one more thing in the brief that will be uh, grant job. Grant chart, and I'll talk about that in a minute. But I think the video is more than that. But I'm going to briefly talk about it now. Then I will direct you, direct you to that video uh, in, on our team's page. When the grant chart will answer the question: In when you're going to finish it? 
Okay, so apart from PR2 and PR1, you also have oral presentation. So all of these three things, or four things right here, are all is, are part of your FIT1. Okay, by the end of FIT1, you would have to complete all of these things. FIT1. So you have the brief. Uh, the brief is right now, actually, or this week, or the next couple of days. Uh, PR1, PR2, as well as the oral presentation. Okay. Okay, then what is the FYP2 then? FYP2 involves the following. So first of all is PR3. Okay, the end of it, right? PR3 is involved here, and then finally, that is, which is the end of the result. The way that things happen, actually, along the way when you're writing your report, when you're working on your report, you will be building your thesis. How? You first start with the brief, and then, the first task after the brief will be working on PR1. So for the next, we will have to work on that according to your grant chart, according to your... Um, does anybody have the important dates and know when is PR1 is due? Uh, not sure, sir. Um, it's there, but I'll, ch I'll check for myself. Uh, uh, F1, P1. Yeah, FIP planner, but this is FIP too, yeah. Now, FIP, let me get FIP planner. I think it's, uh, you should have gotten it already from your, your, uh, from your coordinator, but I'll check it anyway. Uh, so, first March. First of March. Okay, yes, we are now 16th of February. So, here by here is first of March. Okay. Uh, what about PR2? What is it due? Twenty-nine March. See, not much time between first and second. Yeah, actually one month. Okay. Uh, what about the oral presentation? Again, the same thing. All right. I'm not sure about the oral, sir. Eh? But the for the logbook, supposed to be submit on May seven. Eh? Uh, yes, that means it's roughly around that time, around that week. The oral presentation it doesn't have a fixed date. It has usually one or two weeks uh, time period. And then we will uh, schedule the, the, the actual session during this time. But they can, we can tentatively say it's around that time. What? May, may, may what? Say may what? Maybe. Seven. Okay. So that's a good start of your. This is actually now the skeleton if you've gone chance. You have to actually plan your FRT activities in semester one around these important days. Um, right now, as in, if possible, by today, uh, you need to finish the brief, which is one page report, basically, plus the time chart. One page uh, proposal, so to speak, of you know, description of your title. It can include a title, synopsis, method, and deliverables, okay? Plus the gun chart. Now, when you're writing the gun chart, I need you to go and watch that other video about gun chart. But for now, um, um, what I need you to understand about ground chart, it's not a general ground chart. And I think that was the purpose of the video. Last week or last semester, when my students submitted ground charts, they gave me a very generic ground chart. Uh, initial studies, literature review, uh, project, uh, blah, this is very generic. I need you to think about your own title when you create a ground chart. Okay, this, if, you, if let's say, uh, Farhan, right? If you want to develop this system, what are the things you need to do specifically for your system? You need to uh, learn Arduino, right? And then you need to learn about uh, motion control. You need to learn about programming. You have to think about this. Yes, sir. Accordingly. And I think the video that is uh, the video here about Gunshot, right? Uh, I go through that in detail. So I strongly suggest that you watch this video right after we end this meeting here. Okay? So that's how uh, the gun chart is important because in the gun chart you will also allocate, uh, you will also incorporate the dates for PR1 and PR2 as well as the oral presentation. Okay. Um, since we have some time, I think uh, later on uh, or maybe sometime next week, we will have another discussion uh, about what to, what to include in PR1. But I, I, uh, I need to check my notes first. Uh, I think for now, uh, what you can say, it's safe to say it's chapter one. And no, I think that would be a different meeting, a different discussion altogether. 
Okay, next week we will talk about it. First, I will put some guidelines in the chat in our Telegram group. The same thing I did with, uh, with PR2 people. I will put the guidelines in the, in the chat in, the, in our Telegram group, and then we have a discussion uh, like this meeting, but specifically about PR1. Okay? I think that's good. Okay? Uh, I think we can talk okay, about so. PR1 and PR2 in detail. But then uh, yes. this is the idea. See, after you finish PR1, PR2, and oral, then you go to the next semester. And of course, um, don't forget that you have also special sem break. Over here is roughly 13 weeks. You can definitely use this time. I strongly recommend that you do so. After you come back from it, after you come to the FIP2, then you have also PR3. And then after you finish the, that, you will have to check the Okay, tentatively, what PR1 must include? Chapter, uh, the details will come later, but this is just tentatively. Yeah? So chapter one, which is introduction, then chapter two, which is literature review. And in PR2, you will have also these two things, uh, chapter one and chapter two, but then you will have to add chapter three. Uh, not uh, add, but start chapter three. Uh, don't worry about the details or, what, or the meaning of start chapter three, but I will discuss that later. Intro only. Okay. The idea is that by the end of semester one or by the end of FIP one, you already know how to achieve your project, the methodology that is. And I don't mean general methodology, oh, Arduino and code. No, you need specifically the elements, the components, the mechanical design, and the, and the program itself. That they have a, or at least the algorithm for the program. And oral presentation, not much different from PR2, or maybe just improvements. And then PR3, we will just come down here. And then we will have uh, chapter three completed by now. And also chapter four, which is results intro only. And then by the time you reach this point, see, here's what I mean by accumulate. By the time you reach the point where you have to submit the, the draft of your thesis, you already have all of these chapters already written. All you have to do now is complete your results and then add one more chapter, which is conclusion. I mean, and that will be the end of it. So this is conclusions. And then, of course, after that, the references. And that's your thesis. So in, the, in other words, uh, you, can, you will not be required to start writing your thesis at the very end. You will accumulate your thesis as you go along. In PR, by the time you finish PR1, you should, um, you should basically, uh, yeah, I think this is intro, or uh, yeah, intro only, or start, yeah. And so in, in PR1, you will have to finish these two chapters, chapter one and chapter two. And in PR2, you will have to complete uh, the literature review and then begin chapter three. And as you come to PR3 the next semester, or FIP2, you will have these three chapters already completed, and then begin with the results and findings. And then finally, and when you complete the thesis, you have all of these chapters completed, then you just have your conclusions and you can go. Okay? And you do this, the writing part, along the way while you are working on the actual model and building your actual design. So that's what I meant by you are working on the project plus you are writing the reports. So when you are, for example, working on PR1, you will also be uh, figuring out the components for your design and learning the skills needed. Let's say learning programming or whatever, right? And by the time you reach this point, you have already identified the method, so therefore you have the exact idea what the components you need and what's the algorithm that you need to, to, to achieve your, your, you know, your task. Then here, while you are at this point, you will start buying the hardware. I think this is an ideal time for this, to buy the hardware. Uh, and then once you have the hardware ready, then you can actually build it while you have this. Then once you have the build, once you build the hardware, then you can complete chapter three. And also you would have an idea how to test your model. Then you can begin chapter four. Then at this time, you have all of this done, and then you can then complete your testing, then you have some results, then you can put to chapter four. And then once you learn the values, or once you learn everything from chapter two or chapter from your results, then you can run the conclusions and then begin to chapter three. You see how they work together. If you delay yourself until the end, or if you don't follow this timeline, then you're gonna have troubles in, in your project. So that is why in your gun chart that you're going to submit to PI as soon as possible. You will have to plan for these activities as well. Apart from writing the theory, I think the Gantt chart can wait for a while. And I think tentatively chapter one, uh, and this is, uh, I think this one right here uh, is focused on chapter one. Yeah, chapter one. And I'll talk about that later. What, what, thing, what do you write in chapter one? And here you will have to focus on uh, chapter two, which is literature review. 
Uh, and then, uh, then over here, obviously, uh, by the time you reach here, the focus will be on chapter three. Yeah. So chapter three. And over here, you will then complete chapter four and five. Okay. So basically, uh, that's your overall plan. So you take your gun chart, or take your, watch the video on gun chart, take, starting from your title and then putting in mind the important dates for PR1, PR2, and oral, and then putting in mind the tasks you have to do to develop your gun chart specifically for your project. Okay? Um, again, once you watch that other video about gun chart, it will make perfect sense to you into how to do that. <coughs> Excuse me. Any questions? I know there is a lot of doubt and a lot of confusion at this point, but don't worry. Uh, the time being, uh, let's take it one step at a time. Yes, uh, Amiro, you have another question? No, sir. Uh, see, when you look at all of this, uh, when you look at uh, uh, when you look at when you look at all of this in one shot like this, you might feel a little bit overwhelmed. Oh, there's a lot of things to do, but don't worry. We will take exactly uh, almost one year to finish all of this. Right now, all I need you to focus on is this guy right here. That's it, the brief. The brief is just one page report. By, by this week, I think by today, or as early as possible, okay? As early as possible, okay? Um, because you need to work on the your PR1. Once you finish the brief, uh, then you can begin working on your PR1. Uh, I will put the guidelines for PR1 uh, in, the, in the Telegram group, and then next week we can discuss but, uh, in audio or in verbal. Oh, I, I can probably do that now. But I want to make this usually from 11 until 1 or until 2. Oh, uh, sorry, is that, is that until 12 or until 1? I forgot. Our consultation hour for today. Is it until two, until 1, right? Let me check my schedule. Uh, uh, yes, until 1. Until 1. So we have time, right? Yeah. <laughs> Okay, we can take a small, uh, I need to take a small break now for about five minutes. And then after the break, we will come back and discuss the online, how to work now. Okay, the point about the gun chart is still there. I'm not gonna uh, do that now. Uh, I'm gonna actually uh, basically uh, work on that. Uh, you already have the video for that. I'm gonna actually uh, stop this uh, video now, to stop this recording, because this recording is only for welcome to project. And then after the break, or let's say around one o'clock, yeah, let's take a quick 20 minutes break. Uh, and then at one o'clock, we will come back and make another session only for PR1 and PR2. Uh, Sounds so plan? We have a class on 1 p.m., sir. Oh, I, I forgot. It's only until 1, not until 2. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, yes, in this case, uh, we go, we stay with the plan, uh, we stay with, with the plan uh, that we discussed earlier. I'm going to put the guidelines for PR1 and PR2 in the chat in the Telegram group, and then next week we discuss. Uh, together, or uh, what's what's the content? What are you supposed to do in PR and PR2? Is that clear? Is that okay? Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Um, and yes, sir. So, a quick question for sure. Go ahead. You you did say for the material. Okay, for example, if I'm since my one is drawing, if I do we know, I have to set up what to buy and how do I build it? Is it? Yes. Um. Uh, by the way. Uh, you, I'm not sure if you are aware of this, but uh, you have a budget for your project, uh, about 400 ringgit, if I'm not mistaken, or 200 ringgit. I don't remember. You have to check with the coordinator. And then you can actually claim uh, any cost, any payment, along, as well, as long as it's within about 400 ringgit. Okay? But for this to happen, you, you have to get my approval uh, before you make the purchase, and so, that, uh, so that you'll be able to claim the money. But uh, if you don't care about that, uh, or if you want to buy it quickly or whatever, they can go ahead and proceed and do so. But uh, you do have a budget to claim for. You can check uh, the, the FYP coordinator, I think it's uh, Dr. Shukri, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, then you can inquire about him you know, about the latest, uh, the latest uh, procedure for claiming FYP costs. Okay? Okay, sir. Okay. Okay, any other questions? Uh, okay. so yeah, the, sure. gun, the gun chat we need to send with the PR one. Eh? Uh, yes, in a separate document. Like one file is called. Uh, oh, no, no, no. The gun chart uh, will be with the brief as soon as possible. Uh, but of course, 
in the future, uh, in every one of these three R reports, you will always submit the Gantt chart. It will be updated. The same Gantt chart that you start with here, it will be updated and then you will submit it here as well, along with PR1. And then later on, it will be updated and then along with PR2. You get know I me? Mean? Uh, once again, uh, watch that video about Gantt chart. It will make, then you'll understand what I mean by it will be updated. Okay? Okay. So can you send again the the gun chat video because I cannot see in our. If you go to uh, yes, our team, our team page right here. Oh, oh wait, this okay. is not the, no wait, yeah. it's the wrong way. Okay. Uh, Twenty seven October. Up. No. Uh, Six October. Ah uh, yeah, right oh. here. Six October. Okay. Six of October, twenty twenty. If you want, later on, I'm going to find the actual URL for this. I'm going to find the actual URL for this. I'm going to share it. You know how to do it right now. So, FIP, I'm not with uh, undergraduate degree. And here we go. Here's the URL for um, the Gantt chart. Okay? Thank you. Okay, okay sir. And this is the Gantt chart. Okay, so you can work with me directly and either from here or also watch it on the link from our team page. Okay? Sounds okay, good? Sir. Any other questions about the project? Uh, no, sir. Okay, I'm going to share uh, this in the actual file that you see here. I'm going to put it um, below our recording. And also, uh, I'm going to uh, share the guidelines for PR1 and PR2 in a while in the program group. And then next week, we can meet again to discuss PR1 and PR2 as well. All right? That is the plan, inshallah. With the people who are here, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And uh, thank you very much for joining. And I'll see you next week. Uh, next week. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Thank you, sir. You're welcome.